Hey, what's going on YouTube? Adam here with Retro Repairs and time for another repair video. Um, this is a grab from my mailbag today and um, I don't know exactly what it is. So let's uh, crack it open and take a look. <clears throat> so we've got Pokemon Ruby version for the Game Boy Advance coming to you in a Game Boy cartridge case, which is a nice little add-on. So um, I'm gonna grab this, uh, I'm gonna grab my receipt for this. I wanna see what the deal with this was. Okay, so this is the guy, Pokemon Ruby version for Game Boy Advance. Um, not working, cost me 13 bucks Canadian, which with today's exchange is like, I don't know, 50 cents American, something like that. Not really, I think it's like eight bucks, but a um, little more that I probably want to spend, but it's been a while since I've done a Game Boy Advance cart, so let's uh, let's grab my Game Boy and let's uh, see what we can do here. Alright, so I got my DS Lite. Let's uh, turn this on, see what we've got. No game pack inserted, so it's not reading this game. So let's... Uh, Probably should turn that off first, but whatever. Let's take a look, see what we've got. So Game Boy Advance, they open with a tri-wing screwdriver. So if you don't have yourself one, go pick yourself up a little, uh, little precision screwdriver set, which has a whole bunch of different bits, and you'll be able to get into tri-wing games. Oh boy. So this got wet. Huh. Let's uh, zoom in here. Give you the, give you the full experience. So take a look at all of this. There's little white bits of corrosion on this battery tab here, all the way up here, all along these chips. So may or may not be salvageable, but um, I like a challenge. So let's fire up the soldering iron. Let's see what we can do with this. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is get this battery off. So let's get my tweezers in there. I like to put my tweezer in, apply a little bit of pressure up, and just heat up the existing solder here, which is, there we go. And then just lift it up. Let the solder uh, cool, and then do the same thing for the other side. There we go. So put that off to the side. Next step, gonna be cleaning this guy. Um, we wanna get any of the corrosion and oxidization off this board. And to do so, just gonna use a toothbrush and some 99% isopropyl alcohol. So just dunk the toothbrush, get it nice and soaking wet, full of this stuff, and go to town. I'm going to get in all these little very tiny uh, capacitors here, get all the way through the legs of these chips here. It's possible that with the water and the corrosion, um, we fried one of these ICs, but it's not guaranteed. It might be salvageable, so we're going to gonna try my best. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do, get my desoldering braid out, and I just want to get the remaining resi residual uh, solder off of these pads here. Just get it as clean as I really can. Okay. When you're doing this, just be alert that there are some very small capacitors nearby. You don't want to accidentally grab one with your soldering iron and lift it straight up because they're so small, not only are they difficult to put back on, but you might not even notice until it's too late. I would be lying to you if I said I have never done that before. Perfect. So let's see what else we've got going on here.
You know what? For this, I think I'm going to fire up the hot air gun. Okay, so my hot air is up to temperature, so first thing I'm going to do, get my solder, or not my solder, my flux, and just basically coat the board with flux. I want to get flux on all of the points that I want to reflow, and that's basically anywhere that there's a capacitor or a contact for a chip somewhere. Um, this will just kind of help it flow nicely, also clean it off a bit. Perfect. So now, we hot air. Get things out of the way. Basically all you really do, just circle over the chip as a whole for a little bit, warm it all up, and then you can start focusing on certain areas such as this, uh, I think this is the ROM chip right here. point of this is to basically reflow all this solder. We want to get the solder into a molten state, get it to reconnect all the boards on here. Hopefully the traces are good and there's just uh, you know, some broken or corroded solder connections. Okay, so I'm going to let that cool. Very important, you do not touch it until it's fully cool. If you start knocking it or touching it too early, you might hit some capacitors or resistors out of position. You could move these chips out of position, so you really don't want to do that. Give it a solid 30 seconds until it's ready here. I should be able to grab it. It shouldn't be overwhelmingly hot. It's definitely warm. So that's probably fine. Yeah, I think so. So next step, I'm going to be clean it again. Get some rubbing alcohol. We want to get this kind of yellowed flux. Get it up off the board. Flux is corrosive. It will um, it will continue to eat away at these at the solder and the contacts and the pads after you leave it here. So we don't want that. Also going to clean the bottom. And also going to clean my work surface here. As dried on flux stays there forever as well. Okay, so we're going to let that dry a little bit. Let's uh, zoom out. Let's throw it back in the case and see if we got any different action. Still nothing. So, before I go too far, I want to make sure that these pins are clean and being recognized properly. Um, I do know I have not put the battery back in, and you actually don't need to. Um, the battery is there, you you want it before you finish, but the battery is there for, uh, it doesn't save the game like some old games do. It's there for clock based events, so it keeps the time. Um, it will run without a battery or a completely drained battery, so it's not critical to get it up and running.
Okay, so I'm going to try one slightly different technique here, and that's um, basically reflowing these chips, but with my soldering iron instead of the hot air. So, grab your soldering iron. Um, when I do this, I like to have a little, uh, oops. I like to have a chisel tip here. Um, I find some people use conical tips and they just don't work very well. So I'm going to put a little bit of solder on that. Firstly, I'm going to put some more flux. I'm going to focus on this chip here. So I'm just going to run my soldering iron from the top down, or sorry, inside out, I mean, going towards the outside, and this will. Basically, make sure that there's some enough solder on there so that you're getting a connection. You've got to be careful about this capacitor right here, so I might actually just kind of dab in place on top of that. And then hit these last guys here. Same thing on this side. Oops, got a bit of a solder bridge there, which you can just work out. Okay, no bridging there, and no bridging on the other side. Perfect. So we're going to do the same thing again, but on this chip right here. So that one, we did get a bit of solder bridging. And if that happens, Try to clean off the soldering tip and just work your way back down. And if there's still too much, you can always go in with a desoldering braid. But usually you can get it off without. There we go, and that looks good. So then the same thing on this side. And again, you just need to be very careful not to disturb those capacitors that are right there. Got one small bridge at the bottom. There we go, that should be good. And lastly, I'm gonna hit this chip right here at the very top.
And let's see what we got. Come on. There we go. There is a DS option pack inserted. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna check that one out and see what that means. Well, that's a different, uh, different error. Okay, so I'm not sure what a DS option pack is, but what I am sure of is I do have a bit of a solder bridge right here. Let's see if I can get a good focus on this. Right there. You can see it between pins two and three at the bottom there. I wonder if this side zooms a bit nicer. No nicer, but everything else looks okay. So, gotta fix that solder bridge and then try this again. So, let's uh, put you back up on the mount. Oops, stupid mount. There we go, and let's get my solder braid. Where is that again? Right at the very end. So let's get myself a bit of very fresh desoldering braid. Sometimes it's nice to cut it at an angle so that you can uh, get in and not use a lot of it. And then just push it in there. Let's see if that got it out. Now, what did I do with my loop? Jeez. There it is. It appears to be okay. So, let's try that with the uh, solder bridge gone. See if, I don't know, we get any other action. Now we're back to no game pack, so same problem as before. Um, guessing by bridging those two pins, it was sending voltage where it shouldn't and was giving the, uh, the DS the thought that there was something installed that wasn't there. So, um, unfortunately, I don't know what more there is to do here. All of the traces look to be okay. Um, it's possible that some may have been damaged. I think I'm going to check some of these traces along here just to get an idea of whether or not the connections are good. There could just be a bad trace that needs to be repaired. So mainly, I don't know if you can pick this up on camera, but uh, right around here, there seems to be some copper showing. So it tells me this may have, um, might have bad traces. So that one's okay. That one's okay. Unfortunately, I can't see where this goes. Well, I found a, a hole in the trace. So, Let's see if I can 
show you what I'm seeing here. There you go, right at the bottom of this U, there's a little hole there, and that's not supposed to be there. So I'm going to try and bridge that trace and let's see if we can't get this fixed. Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a challenging one because these traces are really so small. So it's right at the bottom of this N to this hole here, which should go up here, but I don't get continuity that whole du duration. So let's get a little bit of wire. And I'm just going to stick it in this hole, I think. There we go. So I'm basically going to run a jumper here. I'm going to go from, what I'm going to do is go from this via right under the end here, which I don't know how well you can see. Go straight from there all the way up to the top here using just a little piece of wire like this. So let's measure out enough. That should be enough. I'm going to leave it connected to the sheathing here and just one more time I want to confirm I'm absolutely sure where I'm going so from here to the middle or from here to here which goes to oh, where's that supposed to go there we go So from right there, bottom of the N, to this first of these three vias right here. So actually, I'm going to start up at the top. So I'm going to stick this piece of wire that I've already kind of twisted up and pretend for a different video through that via, if I can. And I can. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to fold it flat and then solder it right into place there, kind of like it's just a through-hole component. Yeah, that came out. That should hold. Good. Now I gotta get just enough. I'm gonna get slightly more than just enough. I'm gonna trim it down. I say a millimeter or two below where it needs to be. Uh, I hope that wasn't too short. And then using my tweezers, this is the tricky part. Got to get this, bend it down, and stick it through this hole. There we go. And now solder it through on the other side. So now I should have a 
continuity all the way across. So let's check. Going from this pin down here all the way up to the top. Perfect. So let's try, toss that in the cartridge and fingers crossed that we may have a fix. Oh, load you look at that there we go Pokemon Ruby nice okay so batteries run dry game can be played so let's uh, let's put that battery back on um, actually let's test the battery I actually don't have a replacement for this on hand so I'm gonna put this back in but um, I'm gonna order a replacement here Not sure why my multimeter is giving me two volts. Might need new batteries there, but this should give three volts, and I'm getting nothing. This battery's dead. So I'm actually not going to bother with this. This might be a, uh, a different video, a battery replacement video, but um, yeah, so we're able to get this Pokemon Ruby revived by. Um, reflowing all the chips. I don't know if that was entirely necessary or not, but the big one was jumper running up one of those traces into the, I'm guessing it goes to the RAM, I think. So we're going to pop that screw back in and then I'm going to order a new battery for this and sometime pretty soon, I think, we're going to be showing you how to replace the battery on these. These are, I think, CR 2016s. It actually doesn't. Oh, there we go. On the bottom here, CR1616. So they're pretty small. You can't use the same ones that you'd use on a Game Boy Color cartridge. But um, I don't know. I'm gonna make an order, and seems like another a good other video. There we go, Pokemon. So appreciate you washing, watching. I appreciate you washing as well. But appreciate. I can't talk. So we'll test it one more time, and yeah, there we go. Back into Game Boy. And Pokemon, perfect. So I appreciate you watching. Um, hopefully you learned something. You might be able to fix your own Game Boy Advance cartridge. So there's always something. Luckily it wasn't overly complex, but it is kind of fine, very small work. So um, give it a try, you know, worst case scenario, it keeps not working. So I really appreciate you watching. Um, be sure to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and we will see you next time.